time now for our Woodlawn Health Report as we welcome Krista and uh, Brad to the uh, studios. Good morning. How are you guys? Doing well. Thank you. Surviving. Surviving the uh, beautiful Mother Nature weather. It's either a shovel or a boat. <laughs> you, you, you just don't know what you're going to need. The rest of this week's going to be a boat, I think. That's right. That's right. <laughs> as we, we uh, passed off the shovels and the ice skates uh, earlier in the week. So Absolutely. Uh, how's things going on Woodlawn? We're doing well. We're doing well. We want to wish everybody a happy new year, of course, and uh, uh, kind of give you an update of what's going on and, and how we kind of ended the year last year and talk about what we've got going this year. Yeah, it's crazy that we're almost a month out already. We're done. Boy, does it fly. Check it off the calendar. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we did have our board report yesterday, our board meeting yesterday, and uh, financials from the end of the year. Um, December we had about a four hundred ninety-two thousand dollars operational loss. Um, net income was about um, minus three hundred eighty-seven thousand. So, boy, that sounds horrible, right? It's not <laughs> as bad as expected. Yes. Actually, year to date. For 2023, um, we did a substantial turnaround, nearly four million dollars better than the year before. Awesome. So uh, the year before, we were uh, our operational revenue was about a 11 percent loss. This year it was a one percent. So that's a huge difference. It's literally four million dollar yeah. difference from year to year. Gosh. So everything's moving in the right direction. The team over there is doing an amazing job, and, and this year our job is to close the gap. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> yes. you know, uh, we're working on that campaign, and, but but the goal is, you know, one percent. Yeah, that's pretty small. Now let's go back to pre-COVID. Compare those gap that, those numbers. So yeah, if we're looking at and, and I more looking at volumes of patients, um, we're getting really close. Okay. We're not quite to the 2019 numbers that mm -hmm. you know that we were, but we're getting there Good. in nearly every area. Yeah. Um, Inpatient is one that is a, a little bit more of a struggle. Right. Um, it's hard to predict for one, mm -hmm. and then two, insurance keeps changing the, the guidelines, meaning things that three years ago or four years ago, uh, insurance companies would have said, "Yep, they need to be in the hospital three, yeah. four days," that kind of thing. Um, now the insurance company is saying, "Hey, we want you to put them in this status called observation." An observation is technically an outpatient status, okay. and we want you to keep them there no more than 48 hours and send them home. <laughs> um, those are just new rules and regs, right. so that changes our numbers. Mm -hmm. So we may see a little more outpatient numbers, but our inpatient numbers are because of that changing, and it's yeah. really an insurance mm -hmm. thing. Well, so. Brad, hasn't it also been technology as well? Technology is developing, so people don't have to stay as long. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's our right. goal, right? Right. Our goal is always how can we get somebody home quickly and safely. Um, so yeah, lots of those things have changed, and. You know, we're not there yet uh, in Fulton County, but there are some counties uh, that hospitals are testing out equipment to let people actually have hospital at home. Wow. Where they have all the equipment and technology put on and they go home and stay in their house and, and they can be remotely monitored right. uh, by a nurse and a doctor. So wow. um, I think you'll continue to see that as technology gets mm -hmm. better and better. I mean, eventually, your, your, your Amazon Alexa, you're going to be able to talk to it, yeah. and, and it's going to connect you directly to a doctor somewhere. That's amazing. Um, that is the way we're going. Yeah. So, um, some projects going on at the hospital. Um, one thing you're going to notice when you walk in through the emergency department or walk in there to the main entrance is uh, a new triage area. Mm -hmm. So, our emergency department will be opening up in February a new triage room. So, that's a room just outside of the emergency department where an RN will be stationed and can get you in in a private area and talk about what's going on and do what we call a triage, an assessment of what's going on to determine is it best for you to be at the emergency room or really should it be a phone call to your primary care doctor and a visit in the next morning or do you need like a ready med situation or, or right. just an assessment of where makes the most what, sense for the you plan is. and to get you in front of a caregiver faster. Right. Um, what they can do is they can initiate nurse-based protocols um, for everything from chest pain to uh, you know uh, trouble walking right. and so that information gets put in the computer and you can get when you get back in the back you'll have your imaging and your lab work and all those things already done and ready to go so that the doctor walking in has them right now. Right. 
So it'll make the overall process smoother and really truthfully get you in and out of there much faster. And that's so, for the walk-ins? That's, 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 that's for anybody include. that comes in through the emergency mm -hmm. department, right. yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that'll be opening February 1st, so that's something to look forward to. The, the maintenance team over there did that. We did that in-house, and they did a fabulous job. Gotcha. Um, fluoroscopy, we talked about that last month. We're getting there. Uh, floor's been changed out. Machine's been brought in. So now there's some technical things going to happen over the next few weeks, and, and our new fluoroscopy machine will be up and running. Cool. So uh, I'm exciting about that. It's going to be, again, new technology, faster, better images, um, lower overall uh, uh, radiation. You know, people don't think about when they get an x-ray, that's actual right. radiation. And so <laughs> there's a, um, a Lara is a, a as low, um, as low as, um, basically the idea is that let's get the lowest dose that we can get you right. to get you the results we need from the exams. And so again, this will be a machine that Faster times means lower overall radiation, so it's safer for the patient as well. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Um, Woodlawn Hospital and Health Transition. We've talked about for the last couple months that our um, tagline is changing from woodlawnhospital.com to woodlawnhealth.org. That's happened. That happened. So now as you see things happening, and you know, when you're sending out emails and stuff, make sure you remember it's Woodlawn Health. Dot org. Okay. Um, we are a not-for-profit, and the dot .org is a designation for that. So. So all your emails will be changing. Emails will be changing. Our website. Yes, our um, website changed change. over or is changing over as well. So there's a transition period, so that we try not to lose anything that's <laughs> currently out there and happening to the new one. Right. Um, currently, we can receive emails either direction, um, but over time, that will start to fade away. So gotcha. just letting everybody know that. Um, if you have trouble getting an email through, um, please call the hospital, talk to the, whoever it is you're, you're wanting to email. You know, we've got pretty good filters over there, so uh, as we change to the .org, I notice myself personally, a couple emails that I'm like, wait a minute, where's that email? <laughs> I just had to go in and click uh, um, trust, uh, basically, yeah. and then it, everything went through, no problem. So gotcha, gotcha. that has changed. <clears throat> um, another thing we talked about at the board meeting, which is, Probably the largest decision that Woodlawn will make for the next decade is the electronic health record. Mm -hmm. We've talked about how our goal is to get down to one unified system. Right. Um, we made a lot of progress yesterday in the board meeting. Um, today and tomorrow there are a lot of uh, education sessions going on from one of the companies we're looking at. And so we're really hoping by April or May we'll have a final board decision and approval to move forward towards one EHR. Okay. Um, that's a 12 month process after we get started. Um, and it literally is the largest decision we'll make in the next decade. So extremely important. Everybody's doing a fabulous job doing the, the preliminary work to make sure that what we choose is the best for, for the, the hospital employees, yeah. but then also for the community. Yeah. We, want a we want a system where when you go to a Cleveland clinic or you go to Cincinnati Children's Hospital or or the Mayo Clinic that when you come back, we can click a button and your record comes with you. Right. And that's our goal. Or vice versa. Or vice versa, mm -hmm. absolutely. You end up getting referred to one of those facilities for yeah. a specialty situation. We can't, they can click a button and go, oh yep, Woodlawn, click, yeah. and all that information pulls right in. Yeah. So that's our goal, and, and we're getting real close. Well, you know, and you, you think it, to technology and everything else, you know, you mentioned it with, with the equipment and stuff, but you would think that that would be that simple, but it's really not. I mean, there's a lot behind the scenes that's got to happen for that to be able to take place. It really is, and you know, it's a lot like, uh, I would say, the, the cell phone industry. <clears throat> You've got two primary players, um, but they don't always have the same connections to plug their phones in, right? Um, nor the same app, apps mm -hmm. to work, and uh, they don't talk to each other as easy. Yeah, so. And so this is the same thing within the EHR world, and so we're trying to find what is the best system that talks to the most hospitals and mm -hmm. most health systems across the country to give Fulton County mm -hmm. residents the best portability in their right. information. Awesome. So, getting close. Good deal. Um, some other things going on. Um, we had a new nurse practitioner start here in January, Stephanie Wade. Mm -hmm. um, she's a nurse practitioner up at Woodlawn Medical Professionals, which is right there on the second floor of the professional building. Um, she's open for business and, and we want to welcome her to the community. Um, has over a decade's experience as an NP, and her and her family just moved here in the last year. 
Cool. So very excited to awesome. have her and, and get her going. And then to the community, you may start receiving phone calls regarding our chronic care management program. So Woodlawn has partnered with a company called Chartspan, which is a national company providing chronic care management. It's available to all Medicare and Medicare replacement uh, plan recipients. Um, what it is is an extra set of ears for anyone who has two or more chronic medical conditions in that age range or in that insurance bracket. And what they're going to be doing is it's an RN calling you and saying, hey, you know, Brad, um, I'm calling to have you, uh, I want to make sure you get in and check with your doctor on your diabetes or your, your breathing issues, your COPD. Um, hey, you haven't gotten your, your colonoscopy when you should have. Um, hey, you haven't went to the doctor in the last year. You probably ought to go get just a checkup. Um, so it'll be a service available. It's voluntary, um, but it is something they can sign up for through their insurance and there'll be nurses contacting those patients, keeping track of them each month, and then also communicating back to their doctor. And they're gonna call, call my doctor and say, hey, Brad's not doing what he should. <laughs> uh, he needs to get in there and see you. You might wanna give him yeah. a call, yeah. that kind of thing. It's just an extra set of ears mm -hmm. to, to help people make sure when they have multiple issues that they're keeping up with everything from their medications to their annual testing. Right. So, Sounds like a great great deal. It is a great program and it's going on across the nation and we just added that service this year. So if you get that phone call, yes, Woodlawn Hospital has partnered with Chartspan, a nationally recognized company in chronic care management, to help make sure that the people of Fulton County have that as an option. There you go. So, um, another thing we want to talk about, price matching. Woodlawn has a price match program. Um, we, don't, we don't hear about it as much as we probably should, but we do have a price match program for self-pay patients if um, you have a quote from another facility on a the same service we'll match that price mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we take care of the the residents of Fulton county and surrounding areas so if you have a quote from an mri from a different location bring that quote in call us get us a copy of that we'll match that quote cool so we just want to make sure everybody is aware yeah. of that um Red dresses. I am not the one to talk about red dresses. You're not going to wear a red dress? I sh probably will not wear a red dress. <laughs> we are trying to get him to wear one today. No, I'm joking. In all honesty, um, we are so excited to partner with the Fulton County Chamber for their ladies and or their women in business event next Friday. And what we're doing is we're having Dr. Aldridge come. And he's not wearing a red dress, or at least I don't think he is. Uh, and you never know about Dr. Aldridge. <laughs> And he is um, we're going to talk about women and heart health. Um, women have different symptoms than men and many times go undetected. And um, the nature of busy professional women, most of the time things could be um, checked and there could be less risk. So he's going to talk all about that. And then um, we're also going to be doing blood pressures and then they have a speaker as well. Um, and we're encouraging everybody. It's a national Go Red Day for women's heart health. So. Um, We'll be there in our red dresses and we're encouraging anybody coming out to be wearing red to support heart health as well. Um, if you want more information, it's going to be a great event. Go to the Fulton County Chamber website and they'll have more. Um, and we're just really excited to bring this to our, the community. I believe it's the first ever red dress. This is a national thing that we're able to bring to our county. Cool. Yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah, it really is important. I mean, Krista was just saying it. I mean, symptoms for ladies with cardiac conditions are just different. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's con you know called the, the silent killer mm -hmm. um, for women. So it's very important. We're happy to be able to be a, a sponsor of the event. And so it's going to be at Winfield Crossing, yes. correct? Yes. And so contact the chamber yeah. if you need more yeah. information. There you go. Just one of the great ways we're going to help helping out. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, to be a part of those things, and we're, we're happy to be a part of those things. So um, like I said, reach out if you have uh, questions. Um, OB department, wanted to give a little bit of an update. Um, Dr. Adebayo, who's been with us the last few years, will be leaving Woodlawn Hospital February 27th to be his last day. Okay. We want to thank him for um, his service to Woodlawn and wish him the best moving forward. Um, but we want to make sure everybody understands that our OB department is, is going strong. Um, we've added two new providers this uh, past year um, who provide OB. So if you have OB needs, our OB Oasis is open and ready. Um, Dr. Ricketts and Dr. Sanders from our Argus location would be happy to take care of your needs. And then Dr. Witt at our Fulton County Medical location. Um, and then Dr. Amadi at our Woodlawn Medical Professionals. So we've got four providers eager to take care of your, your maternity needs. So 
if you have any questions, please reach out and we'll get you in touch with the, the appropriate provider and get you in. Perfect. So, yeah. And then marketing, marketing, marketing. <laughs> I always want to put out a plug to check us out on Facebook and Instagram and, and our new website. All and, those and, fun uh, things. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so um, we are still very active on social media. If you want to find out what's going on at the hospital, the best, or the health system, the best way to do that's on social media. Um, that's something that we're constantly as a team working on, um, and we have seen a lot of uh, growth with that. So, and then always make sure Mondays is the is the prime time and location. Um, we have our Meet the Team Monday, so if you want to see our four providers that Brad was just talking about, their picture went up on Monday. Um, as well, and we have Dr. Celio. She's returning as well. Absolutely, right? we're really excited. Dr. Celio is doing a fellowship rotation in obstetrics um, up in uh, Michigan, and will be back to us uh, in October. And so we're really looking forward to that. So you know, then we'll have we'll have five providers yeah. who can perform uh, OB services. So awesome! Um, absolutely, lots of options for the community. Celebrating those babies' birthdays. Absolutely, every day of the week except the one that's mine. <laughs> I've stopped those this year. You stopped those this year? Yeah, I decided I'm going to be done with those. No, can't be. I know. No. Anything else, Krista, on your docket? No. All righty. Well, right. again, well, thank you for letting us earn the right to care for you, and we'll listen to you and see you next month. All right. We'll look forward to it. We'll do it.